Good morning again. Good morning. Uh -huh. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Yeah, glad to see you. Um, glad to see you too. Um, I think uh, they can start. Um, but I fortunately not all people connect. And uh, maybe we can uh, wait some minutes. Dear colleague, uh, I think we can start our <coughs> section meeting. And um, I'm glad. <coughs> sorry. I'm glad to see you all uh, on uh, our conference meeting. And uh, uh, we can start from um, my uh, speech. And uh, I want to. Um, before my speed, I want to tell you uh, some rules uh, about our conference uh, session. Um, I will um, ask you uh, for a speech and um, uh, you can um, on your uh, turn on your video uh, or your uh, presentation and um, uh, after all presentation, if uh, any um, any participation uh, will have uh, for questions, uh, we can uh, ask each other, or uh, we can write uh, the question uh, for the chat by the chat, and uh, after that we will uh, give uh, the next uh, one um, speech. Uh, okay. <clears throat> We can start for the, my uh, speech and um, I want uh, to uh, show you my presentation. The uh, title of my presentation is uh, Methodical Approach uh, to Assessing uh, Food Safety of Ukraine. Uh, I want to tell you that um, uh, food safety is a very um, popular um, title of uh, many uh, scientific research and um, uh, if you uh, uh, and uh, all of uh, us knows that uh, this mm -hmm, um, this uh, term is uh, uh, not uh, not resorted um, in uh, um, different uh, uh, can, can resort it by different uh, authors, uh, but uh, I want to uh, uh, I want to um, uh, tell you about uh, my uh, scientific research and uh, uh, how to calculate the um, food safety in Ukraine. And the level of food safety uh, of a state uh, can be estimated characterizing uh, the following indicators. The state of health of a population is one of the main conditions that issues uh, sust sustainable and uh, progressive development of the state. And uh, another um, uh, indicators uh, uh, play the uh, a big role uh, on um, food safety. Um, using the um, uh, using the uh, result of uh, uh, researches uh, of another authors, uh, uh, we understand that um, many authors try to uh, calculate the um, food safety. Uh, uh, in a way, um, result, but uh, <clears throat> I want to um, uh, uh, to give uh, um, the result of my um, scientific approach, and uh, I uh, think that um, I can start from um, uh, present uh, the concept of a methodological approach uh, to food safety assessment. I think uh, it uh, should be understood as a set of methods for assessing the state of food safety at the strategic and uh, tactical level in order to develop measures uh, to um, neutralize the estab uh, established and uh, predictive stress. Uh, and uh, I propose the uh, two type of indicators. 
um, I uh, uh, sh shows uh, these indicators uh, on uh, table uh, one, the strategic and tactical assessment indicators of uh, food safety of Ukraine. The uh, strategic uh, indicators on the left um, and uh, the tactical indicators on the right. <clears throat> and I think that um, uh, all of these <coughs> indicators uh, we can um, calculate uh, by uh, some formulas. And uh, I propose the uh, formulas uh, one uh, to calculate the st uh, strategic uh, food uh, self, uh, safety and um, the, um, the next uh, uh, formulas uh, for calculating uh, the uh, tactical uh, strategic food sa uh, safety. And uh, as a result, uh, we can uh, see the common formula sort uh, that uh, present um, the general uh, food safety indicators as uh, defined as a sum of uh, two indicators above uh, the tactical and the strategic uh, food safety. And uh, <clears throat> um, as a result, uh, we can um, understand uh, the uh, criteria of uh, determine the general indicators of uh, food safety, uh, like a, a crisis state, pre-crisis state, uh, and normal state. And I think that um, uh, these um, criteria can understood um, uh, what kind of uh, food safety we have in Ukraine. And um, in my uh, next uh, table, uh, I want to show you the result of food safety assessment of Ukraine based on the strategic indicators. indicators uh, and uh, you can see uh, this table. And um, on, um, uh, sorry, and uh, on my next uh, table four, uh, we can see the result of a food uh, safety assessment of Ukraine based on the tactical indicators. And uh, as, as a result of uh, these uh, uh, tables, uh, we can uh, receive that uh, the Ukrainian uh, food safety assessment based on the tactical indicators. Um, uh, <clears throat> and uh, they have a state of a crisis. And um, as a result of a calculation of a general uh, indicators of food uh, safety, uh, the Ukraine is in a pre-crisis uh, state of food safety and uh, the direct impact of which uh, is uh, worsening the financial conditions of agricultural enterprises, including due a lack of a financial resource. And um, in my uh, scientific, in our um, scientific research, I want to um, show you that um, um, my uh, methodical uh, approach uh, uh, to the assessment of food safety was proposal, and um, uh, I want to understand um, this uh, methodic approach uh, and uh, want to use uh, this uh, methodical uh, approach. Uh, to uh, calculate the state of a food safety in uh, our um, life. And uh, um, uh, these indicators uh, can be used uh, for another countries too, not only to Ukraine. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to uh, ask uh, the another uh, participation, um, Zinaida Shevko and Svetlana Rochenko with uh, title of speech development and uh, uh, justification of strategy, uh, strategy for ensuring uh, financial security of commercial bank. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, I now want to share our presentation. Okay. Um, greetings, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate in the international conference um, Advanced mm -hmm. Economic Law and Education Research. Uh, so let us present the result of the study. Uh, authors are Zinaida Zhivko, <clears throat> Professor of Department of Management, Louis State uh, University of Internal Affairs, and uh, Svetlana Rochenko. 
senior lecturer of uh, Department of Financial and Economic Security, Accounting and Audit, named after Alexey Biketov, National University of Urban Economy in Kharkiv. So uh, the topic of uh, our research is development and justification of strategy for ensuring financial security of a commercial bank. Uh, financial strategy of bank, uh, financial security, set of measures aimed at increasing its value, uh, ensuring solvency, liquidity and stability, efficient capital structure and uh, the most profitable areas of its uh, investments. The purpose, the purpose of the strategy is to increase bank value, its profitability and expand its position in banking market. Strategy of ensuring bank financial security is developed in accordance with the National Ukraine Bank regulations and uh, should be consistent with the overall strategy and developed on the basics of uh, current regulatory framework. Uh, despite the diversity of strategic approaches to ensuring the safety of different banks uh, in the form of ownership, size, capital, the formation of the strategy should take place in a certain sequence. The main stages of forming a bank's financial security strategy are shown on our slide. Uh, at the first stage, the level of commercial bank's uh, financial security is assessed uh, and the decision is made on the, uh, on the need to increase its level. Uh, analytical stage involves selection of indicators of commercial banks, financial security states, and the level of which will be constantly monitored. Uh, as a stage of strategy selection, strategy of bank value growth uh, is selected, taking into account the level of its, uh, of its financial security. Now, the stage of strategy implementation involves the choice of areas, methods, tools to ensure financial security of commercial banks by managing its value, as well as determine the necessary amount of sources uh, and resources uh, for the implementation. According to the development methodology, the level of bank financial security should be assessed in uh, terms of five levels. Optimal, sufficient, satisfactory, uh, low and critical. Um, approbation of this method is carried out uh, on the example of two state banks, State Saving Banks of Ukraine and State Export Import Bank of Ukraine. The result of calculation of financial security levels of state of banks assessment are shown in our slide. Uh, the results of integrated indicator of financial security of state-owned banks assessment indicated a low level of their financial security. Identifying the main factors influencing the value and security of banks allows developing and implementing adequate measures to influence internal factors and take into account external actions. Understanding the dependence of financial security on the factors that uh, determine bank value, we considered it appropriate to develop measures to increase uh, bank value. Our slide uh, describes the strategies for ensuring financial security by means of managing bank value, depending on the level of bank security and uh, their main measures. In order to determine the type of strategy for increasing the value of banking, institution uh, based on the level of their financial security, calculations of gaps of uh, individual security components have been made. As it can be seen from our table on the other slide, uh, the level of security of Soviet banks is low. Uh, to develop an effective and efficient strategy for uh, ensuring uh, bank security by achieving and increase its value, it is advisable to use the methods of strategic analysis. One is the methods of development and efficient effective strategy in uh, gap analysis. The gap analysis um, and the analysis of gaps for each component of financial security has shown that all Soviet banks are characterized by minimum gaps in two key components of financial security, capital resource and value money. Uh, so to obtain reliable results, it is necessary to choose the factors that affect the uh, final indicator uh, and components for which we observe the largest gaps. Uh, calculation for distances uh, between positions of bands in uh, dimensional sp space allow constructing the metrics of winnings uh, that you can see in our slide. Uh, checking the metrics for the presence of sales points shows that the minimum win upper price of the game uh, for State Saving Bank of Ukraine is 7.3672, which indicates the purchase strategy S1 for State Saving Banks of Ukraine. The top price of the game is 
uh, for night. Uh, since uh, the upper and lower price of the game doesn't match, this indicates the absence of the saddle point of the um, feasibility of using mixed strategy. It is advisable to solve linear inequalities to determine the optimal mixed strategy. The result of solving the inequality are presented in our slide. The solution of linear equivalent uh, made it possible to determine the optimal strategy for overcoming uh, strategy gaps for each bank. Uh, though current strategy S1 strategy is optimal for stage 7 Bank of Ukraine. For state export import Bank of Ukraine, the optimal strategy is uh, S2. That is strategy which provides an uh, increase in return of capital interest margin and the capital adequacy ratio and reduce the share of problem loans. The development of strategy for ensuring financial security of commercial bonds is a comprehensive management process that involves formulation of goals, methods and means to achieve them, definition of indicators for measure it results, takes into account risks and has uh, countermeasures. The application of these methodologies will enable managers of banking institutions to minimize time and resource losses to identify and overcome the problems of financial security in a cost-oriented approach. That's all for now. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. <clears throat> I want to... Um, propose uh, the next presentation uh, of uh, Dmitro Milnachuk and uh, Lyudmila Mohelnitska, Human Capital and the Middle Class of the uh, uh, 21st se uh, Century, Characteristic and the Role of Achievement Economic uh, Steadness, uh, Social uh, Security and Political Stability. Well, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Let me start sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, do you can uh, share in not screen, but presentation? Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. OK, OK. Is it OK? Yes, yes. Can you see? Well, thank you very much. Well, dear colleagues, good afternoon once more. Um, it's my pleasure to present the results of our common research. Uh, well, um, I, I would like to share the um, research conducted together with my colleague, Professor Melnichuk Dmitro. Uh, we represent uh, Zhitomir Polytechnic State University, and um, the research is devoted to human capital and the middle class in the 21st century. We focused on the peculiarities and uh, their role in achieving economic steadiness, social security, and political stability. Um, well, we consider um, human capital in our research as an economic asset that is formed as a result of social investment in education, healthcare, and training. It has a significant impact on the transformation of the society's social structure, and as a result, the society acquires new progressive features with the middle class as its dominant component. The middle class is considered to be the stratum or the population that represents innovative judgments and values of modern economic and political culture. Uh, we um, um, used the following methodological basis. It was the theoretical generalization of progressive scientific judgments, the use of statistical analysis and sociological uh, surveys. Uh, well, from the point of view of the form of the society, they consider to be conservative and progressive. And uh, uh, the structure of such societies is different. So conservative society or conservative social structure uh, of the society is characterized by the existence of a few higher circles whose representatives have high incomes and enjoy various privileges of power. There is also a large share of population receiving meager incomes, having low purchasing power. In its turn, progressive so, uh, social structure is characterized by the prevalence of the middle class that serves their own lives. <coughs> Post-industrial society is characterized by the quality of life, which is reflected in available services, conveniences in health, education, recreation and culture. 
Another peculiarity of the post-industrial society is the leading position of the middle class, which is considered to be the basis of social, economic and political stability in the state. It is also considered to be the key to its dynamic development. Um, there are two approaches to singling out uh, the middle class, monetary and sociological. Uh, according to the monetary approach, that is on the basis of the income parameter, uh, and um, according to the sociological approach, that is according to the functions and traditional professions inherent in this stratum in a developed society, uh, the middle class is singled out. According to the authors, it is the monetary approach that has been and should remain the methodological basis for the differentiation of the middle class. But uh, from the standpoint of monetary analysis, Ukrainian society uh, has undergone various promising transformations, but inefficient income distribution policy has hindered the formation of the middle class income group, which should become the basis of the middle class. Uh, according to the conducted empirical research, it was found that the vast majority of respondents considered themselves to belong to the middle class. At the same time, the questions about the total income as a monetary criterion for the differentiation of the middle class received half as many positive answers. The vast majority of middle class professions in Ukraine consider themselves to belong to the appropriate stratum of the society, not on monetary, but on sociological grounds. And uh, we have arrived at the following conclusions in the course of the research. Uh, so the criterion of uh, conditions for the knowledge application in the form of human capital is the main prerequisite for strengthening the middle class. The middle class in Ukraine is not at the stage of its formation, but on the contrary, it undergoes destruction and segmental decline. The main problem is that the majority of those who perceive themselves as members of the middle class do not belong to it from a monetary point of view. Those who can be classified as middle class in terms of income are not in fact the carriers of progressive judgments about the state development. That is all for now. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. I uh, ask uh, to... Um, uh, give uh, your presentation uh, Vladimir Panchenko and Alexander Chernenko, Economic Security Management of, of uh, the Organization, System Structural Approach. Uh, do you ready? Are you ready? Uh, yes. Good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, the title of my speech, Economic Security Management of the Organization, system structural approach one introduction the uh, energy i'm so, uh -huh. oh, oh yes it's okay mm -hmm. the emergence of economic risk which poses a direct threat to the business organization causes managers to seek effective management solutions aimed at reducing possible losses. The problem of economic security was studied in the works of the following scientists. Blank, Zaharov, Prigunov. It is important to look for a new concept of economic risk management to avoid possible threats and eliminate the harmful effect of the external and internal environment of the organization. Two, research methodology. The purpose of the study is to characterize two conceptual principles of managing the economic security of the organization using a system structural approach. The research uses scientific methods, analysis, system, induction, and deduction. Three, results of the research. One, futures of economic security management of the organization. Any business is risky, so the main task of sol solving this problem is to choose an effective model of economic risk management, financial and economic of research. 
Any business is risky, so the main task of solving this problem is to choose an effective model of economic management. Financial and economic security management is provided by a targeted impact on threats that can affect the value and market prospects of the business. The result of such influence is the neutralization and minimization of threat to financial and economic security. Economic risk, in our opinion, is quantitative assessment of possible financial losses of the organization caused by the danger from the external or internal environment to the internal factors influencing the financial security of Shulimo includes financial planning and asset management, investment policy, risk management tools in contracts, reservables, wages and salaries, control of current assets, including investors, control over the capital structure of the enterprise, enterprise costs and others. Uh, two, the essence of content of the system structural approach. The essence of the system structural approach is that any organization should be considered as an open social and production system, which consists of appropriate levels of management, higher, middle, lower, elements, departments, divisions, branches and the links between them, exchange of information, resources, and also has the purpose of activity and management mechanisms. System structural approach based on three postulates. The organization should be considered as a system according to the classical school of management a set of elements and connections. The organization should be considered by levels of management, structural hierarchy of power, senior, company president, board of directors, middle, branch directors, heads of departments, lower, heads of departments, heads of working group, foremen. Availability of management technology, vertical and horizontal coordination of work, with always of use to consider the organization as a whole. The use of system structural approach in the management of economic security allow us to consider risk management at all levels of management and structural elements of the organization, which allows use to develop an effective model of any type of business. Three, features of economic security management of the organization. The economic security management of the organization should be primarily staff oriented. The second feature of successful management of economic security of the organization is its interaction with consumers. The third component of management the economic security of the organization is to use of modern management tools. Any process is the organization are business. Business processes are a logis logically constructed sequence of actions and the secure should head from the enterprise to the process to the exit it to obtain a result. The fourth component of the management of economic security of the organization is information support. The, the five future of effective management of economic security of the organization is the control of logistic business processes. Uh, four, discussion on results. Therefore, these mathematical apparatus allow to take into account the management. With its help, the acceptance of ma ma managerial risk by managers for the organization will be more uh, balanced and economically sound. This will allow you to choose the best solution and assess its possible outcome, consequences 
we conducted a survey of any 16 managers of leading companies in the city of Kropivnitsky, ATB market, Comfy, supermarket Fushet, which confirmed the positive result from the implementation of those proposals. Therefore, measures to improve the economic risk of the organization should be focused on the optimal use of its our assets, personal, funds, resources, and time. Conclusions. The author's model of economic security management of the organization on the basis of system structural approach is constructed and its elements are characterized. The problem, sorry, the program of anti-crisis management, methods of risk management, means of control. The requirements of the management of economic security of the organization on the basis of system structural approach are described. Orientation on personal, interaction with consumers, use of modern tools of management of business processes, information maintenance, control of logistics business processes of the organization. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, participate uh, is uh, Dr. Professor Kadi uh, Sukharukov and uh, Olga Sukharukova. Uh, structural Entropy of Economic System. Arkady Ismailovich, do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, dear participant, in our hearings, I have to offer results of a study on the topic uh, structure, uh, structural entropy of economic system. Uh, the relationship structural deformations and the entropy processes in the economic system is uh, really revealed. And the um, authors um, uh, introduced the concept uh, of structural entropy into scientific uh, circulation. Uh, tak. Yes. Uh, structural um, uh, uh, structural entropy uh, is um, characterized uh, by the narrowing of the economic structure, structural imbalance, uh, loss of synergetic potential. Um, An uh, interdisciplinary approach uh, for this research is uh, most uh, productive. Uh, transitional um, countries uh, choosing the uh, paradigm of market, uh, market development and uh, as a rule, abandon protectionism. The example of uh, Ukraine shows um, that at an open economy, the real sector is losing uh, competitiveness. Uh, slide three. Um, in the structure of uh, merchandise um, export over the past uh, 10 years, the share of uh, agricultural products increased uh, to um, 38%. In the same time, the share chemical and uh, metallurgy product, um, engineering and transport, uh, transport equipment decreased. The share of transport uh, services increased to 44%, uh, but the share of service related uh, to the use of um, intellection um, uh, um, uh, property decreased uh, due to the outdated technolo te technological structure of economy. A positive trend was the growth in the uh, share of ICT service. Uh, how, um, um, however, the post-industrial economy cannot compensate for the loss of uh, position in industrial sector. Asymmetry of international economic 
relations leads to the formation negative balance uh, foreign trade of Ukraine. Um, the unemployment uh, rate remains high, with, uh, which uh, provoke uh, high labor migration. Um, in uh, 2016, public debt increased to 81% in relation to GDP. Uh, European integration uh, was aimed at um, con uh, uh, conver uh, converging the development of countries. Um, however, uh, calculations based on uh, data from international organization show that Ukraine's indicator, uh, uh, in particular, uh, GDP per capita according to uh, purchasing power parity, uh, overage salary, budget revenue, uh, etc., uh, remain at a low level. Slide 7. Uh, research shows that only the structural um, diversity of a, a, an economic system can provide flexibility, diversification, and entropy reduction. Institutional uh, mechanism uh, to ensure positive structural uh, changes as presented uh, at slide um, eight. Um, uh, it uh, includes uh, measures for modernization of the real sector of economy of the economy, uh, equalize regional proportions, um, and, uh, and uh, Ukraine's uh, participation at international communication projects. Uh, measures uh, can be implemented in a, a comprehensive manner, subject to the proposed principle of investment policy. Thank you for your attention. I want to ask uh, the next participant uh, to present uh, the presentation um, the Vasil Franchuk and Alexander uh, Silkin. This um, um, the uh, speech uh, implementation of anti-crisis management in the context of uh, ensuring uh, sustainable development of uh, enterprises. Um, my name is Alexander Silkin. I'm from the, I'm the philosophy doctor from Ukraine Academy of Printing together with my co-author Vasil Fanchuk from Lviv State University of Internal Affairs. We want to share today, today a topic about implementation of anti-crisis management in the context of ensuring sustainability and development uh, of the enterprise. So to be quick as possible, we will talk shortly about how we think need to implementation the anti-crisis management uh, to the enterprise. As you know, the financial crisis is always in a topic for very much research. It's uh, not a com something, some common thing you can hear or see. Uh, of course, uh, you need in some way use some anti-crisis measures, uh, uh, but this is expensive. Uh, not all enterprises, top management want to decide to use uh, anti-crisis management, but this is uh, the discussion for another topic. This time uh, we will talk about if we decide to uh, use anti-crisis management, the enterprises have a resource to use this and what need to implementation uh, of uh, anti-crisis some measures uh, of, uh, to, to your uh, functional environment in the uh, enterprise. So first of all, what you need is of course some support, informational support. The best uh, informational support is, of course, this is information about your financial and economy uh, um, uh, elements. Of course, this is uh, account think and analytical support. You, you need you need uh, both of this. Uh, you need information of the external environment of enterprises, information about internal environment enterprises, what is formation 
this support from an account analytical. After that, when you have it, you need to uh, do some operation accounting uh, and forma f forming the information. Only the need, only about the, some uh, problems that can create financial crisis and help to realize and use some anti-crisis measuring and help top management to uh, fix it and uh, uh, stop the financial crisis at all. And of course, um, uh, uh, something like this about accounting, you need an analytical way. So you need to synthesize your all analytical information. And together, you have some sort of account analytical information package that help anti crisis management system in the final stage. Of course, uh, uh, we decide to. Uh, okay, one second. Uh, we decide to create some strategic map of the formation and implementation of the anti-crisis management system and the, as the enterprise. Uh, based it uh, uh, to much quicker possible, we have to talk about three main stages. This is the first information, the diagnostics, and the uh, events. And the first stage is all just in the beginning. You formation your goals, your purpose, your objects, your subjects. Find out how many resources you have, what you have, uh, and make your decision. Yes, we will use the anti-crisis measures. You, you, we will use the anti-crisis management uh, system. After that, you start the diagnostics. You start to analyze analysis. Uh, you use this. Actually, this accounting and uh, analytical information supports to find out how much bad this situation is, how much bad financial crisis is all in. Because when we actually when we uh, talk about the crisis, uh, crisis in a, in an enterprise is always finished. It doesn't matter when it starts in a personal system. If this uh, starts in a, some um, uh, organization system enterprise, they always finish in the financial stage. Always in the end, you have financial crisis. This is why anti-crisis management way, way depends from your financial security in your enterprise. And you need to start, of course, with when they begin, but in the end, diagnostic will be in the your financial indicators your financial security system, your financial uh, uh, team won't work in, in your financial sector, in your enterprises, this all uh, will finish up there. After that, when you have your support, you have uh, you understand how much research you have, do you need help from another enterprise, do you need help from the government if you're lucky, or you need the help from the banks can give you some credit. Uh, you need to understand this, the beginning of the event stage is cam coming and you need to understand uh, how many uh, you can do with this. So you make in, in uh, this stage of events. Uh, top management of enterprises, the directors must uh, make decisions. So if they uh, applicate their tools uh, and try to fight and stop the financial crisis in the enterprises, or no, they just close and that's all. So in this little strategic ma map, you we try to uh, 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 show the some visual information support how to use. Of course, all enterprises are different. If you uh, take some uh, enterprises, they give you some engineering enterprises. They have another situation. They have another environment. They have another uh, stress. They, the impact uh, for the function. So all of this individual. So in the future, of course, we need to uh, expand our research and uh, try to uh, focus on some special sector, probably actually in engineering. Uh, but for right now, for a quick presentation, that's all. Thank you so much for your uh, attention. That's all. Thank you very much. And I want to <clears throat> propose the next uh, participation. Um, Marta Karpa and Alexander Akimov. Uh, 
competence approach uh, to the development of a modern public administration theory and practice of implementation. Uh, good day, dear colleague. I present you a topic, a competence approach to the development of modern public administration, theory and practice of implementation. A uh, few minutes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, the article uh, proposed to apply the competence approach uh, to the development of modern public administration. Um, the public administration object are the interest of social uh, institution in the common ter territory, which have different interests and goals. The problem of defining and allocation public function as um, uh, prerequisite for defining and uh, forming the competence of public institution in uh, analysis. According and a number of research, the competence paradigm uh, emerging uh, in the 17th of the 20th century. The development of a competence approach as a systematic um, concept uh, for distribution, a person education is uh, linked uh, with the research of the formation American linguist uh, Chomsky, uh, who formulate uh, the competence of uh, competence in um, relation to the theory of language. As the dominant educational paradigm, uh, the competence approach began to develop uh, in the late 17th under the influence of the uh, formulation of education modern in Western Europe and the United States. Uh, in each of the varieties of the government uh, concept, uh, the specificity of the use of competence, um, uh, the concept of responsible government uh, manifests itself uh, in uh, terms of responsibility as a competence of the competence of man management subjects. Uh, the concept of um, democratic government is um, manifest in the context of the formulation and uh, consolidation of the status characteristic of all subject of governments as acquire, participate, uh, forms power, department structure and responsibility. Uh, most of the attention is uh, focused um, on the uh, concept uh, of good governments, good, good governments, which imply uh, in um, environment of business and uh, the public uh, in government's process, uh, the basis of which in human rights instruction between various um, institution levels. Uh, all types uh, of the government's concept explain the participate of uh, its subject in public administration, including among uh, citizen, public organization, institution and business structure. Um, public control creates a sitting uh, competence um, rest structure in uh, government's uh, institution or even self-government institutions. Uh, the Mm, uh, European chapter of local self-government formulate uh, the principle defining the nature and scope of the competence of local self-government and ensuring the uh, autonomy of local authority. The shape of uh, competence of uh, local self-government according to the European chapter of local self-government which come into force for Ukraine from 1998, formulated in such basic principle. Uh, six uh, position you can see in this slide. Uh, next, um, uh, in general, uh, the main expected result uh, of appealing the competence approach in the field of public administration uh, were identified. Uh, sitting the um, border of the competence of public service entities, uh, uh, improvement of legal and 
regulating framework in terms of establish and uh, delineating the competence of subject of public administration. Uh, next, uh, increasing the level of public um, confidence in the according of public authorities and public officials. Uh, next, uh, recording the cost of uh, performing public function and uh, um, finances um, formulate, formulate of a uh, comparative uh, culture in public authorities and in the activities of public official. Uh, thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask uh, the next. Participate uh, Ludmila Akimova and Ala Lisachok. The current state of the investment environment in Ukraine and its impact uh, on the invest investment security of the state. Hello, my name is Ala. Uh, uh, I propose on your attention and the topic uh, the current state of uh, investment environment uh, in Ukraine and its impact uh, on the investment security of the state. In modern economic condition or during the economic development of any countries in the world, this is question in attractions additional sorts of funding for the country's sector. Uh, but attractions additional resource in the possible to achieve stabilization of the economy. That is development to sectors of the economy that require additional funding of the leading in the state. Uh, attraction investment is a global issue that has been resided by leading cinches for my years, many years. And soon of the favorable uh, investment environment is in the key issue in the process of ensuring sustainable uh, economic development of the country. By the aid of it means it is possible to create new jobs, uh, which in turn will reduce in the unemployment rate and the will uh, relive uh, the workload in the country's economic system. The study of the problem of attractions for each investment as well as uh, determined the level of investment security were present in the works of the leading science. Uh, in the world's considerance Ukraine's positions in the joint business rating during 2016-2020, we see that about mentions rating during uh, Ukraine demonstrates the positional dynamics in the brown is the key indicators. In uh, 2020, Ukraine took uh, 64th place with the um, 19th point uh, better than the same period in 2016. Uh, with the overall rating increase of seventh positions, Ukraine demonstrates the significant uh, significant uh, progress in uh, five indicators. Uh, investor protections, obtain building permits, connection to the power grids, integration trace, property registrations. Uh, on these um, indicators, uh, we see uh, um, positive uh, dynamics. Uh, unfortunately, in the influence reforms were carried out in spite of other areas that led to the uh, degrees in uh, Ukrainian positions. This, uh, detections, performance bond, uh, and registrations of enterprise, uh, obtains credits, and uh, settlement of the issue in influence. Um, in the ranks, uh, 116 uh, 114th of quality of road infra uh, infrastructure, the state ranks uh, 25th in terms of destiny of railways and uh, 34th in terms of influence of railways traffic.
In addition, Ukraine runs uh, 54th for airport connectivity and uh, 101st for effectively of air transport service. The country runs uh, 57th for connections to liner shipping and uh, 78th of effectively uh, of airport services. The study shows that Ukraine has a relevant favor. Uh, investment environment for attractions investment. This uh, competitiveness of the economy plays the important role in the formations for a favorable filed for investment. In accordance with the, the rating of the countries that determined by certain indications that the law to the better understand the state of the economy. To intensify in the investment process in Ukraine, this is necessary to solve a number of problems that still hinder the creations for a favorable investment environment. On these pictures, uh, we can see uh, the main problems uh, who um, uh, what uh, has economy in Ukraine. Uh, this includes the war in the east of the country, corruptions in the present taxation system, shadows economy, and uh, impact lagger in the regulations framework that regulated investment issue and direct the right vectors of the process of ensuring investment security. Uh, the main steps to overcome the uh, above problems should be transparency and openness of legislations in uh, particular tax legislations and in the war in the east of the country, uh, Iraqian corruption. Uh, this is all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. I want to ask the next uh, participate uh, participate present um, the scientific result. Uh, Eugenia Druhova and uh, Jana Koval, institution. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, institutional mechanism of uh, function of a labor market in the conditions of a market economic of Ukraine. Start, please. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I want to introduce the uh, institutional mechanism of functioning, uh, functioning of the labor market in the condition of the market economy of Ukraine. So, uh, um, did you see my presentation? Yes. So on the first uh, slide, you can uh, see uh, some basic rule uh, which mechanism uh, on labor market. So uh, the development of the national economy is largely determined by functioning of labor market and uh, particularly of use and labor resources. Uh, so the labor market characterizes the relationship uh, between workers, employees, and uh, government. Government included uh, uh, such sum of uh, public and um, uh, state organization. The labor market is the most complex and uh, conversional element of the market economy. So, uh, interest of worker, employees, and state and interview uh, so principal working conditional of work and and uh, its mean of all relationship in labor market uh, on the next uh, slide uh, uh, we have some uh, table uh, about uh, principles uh, of economics uh, it's five principle which include labor market on our opinion uh, so the First principles, uh, it's uh, uh, legislative, uh, it's uh, partnerships, uh, it's universal, uh, universal principles, and uh, targeting, uh, targeting complements. Uh, so um, all this uh, uh, principle based of two uh, determinations. Uh, for example, uh, on the some factors which include this labor market. 
uh, of course, um, as we can see, uh, the economic factors include modernization of pr production, organization, and changes in uh, working condition, financial situation of the uh, enterprise relative of institutional factors. Uh, so all these institutional factors could be uh, included in um, uh, um, in main um, uh, basic uh, functioning of labor market mechanism. Uh, on the next slides, um, uh, um, uh, we can describe uh, some uh, principles and uh, do a conclusion about uh, um, levels uh, and social and labor relationship, for example, uh, government and uh, constitution of law of Ukraine and uh, how its presentation works between employment. Um, <clears throat> the second is uh, collective agreements and uh, um, collective agreements and uh, contract. Uh, um, uh, so, uh, and the third, it's uh, about uh, employ employment contract. Uh, the Labor Court of Ukraine provides for both oral and uh, writing forms of concluding of employment contract. Uh, so, thank you for your attention. And if you uh, have uh, some questions, I um, answer. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. The, to, uh, to invite another participate uh, to present the result of the scientific work. Mm -hmm. uh, the next is uh, Abanina, Hanna Abanina and Said um, Bakri. Uh, visual media is a factor uh, in the mental hands of today's youth. Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the psychological effects of uh, visual media and uh, how it is affecting our youth. Uh, to start uh, this topic, uh, I will start it uh, by a uh, little bit talking about uh, the tobacco industry. Like whenever you are buying tobacco, there is a warning sign that it causes serious uh, uh, health problems, even cancer and deadly diseases but uh, you're buying it uh, by your own choice. What if there is something that can make you psychologically sick only by looking at it, and that too unintentionally? That is what we are going to talk about today. So, uh, uh, it has been proven uh, uh, already multiple times that uh, media uh, and uh, advertisement, especially the photos that are used in advertisement, they have uh, severe uh, psychological effects on youth and uh, it can cause uh, problems like uh, BDD, which is uh, body dysphoric uh, disorder, anti-social behavior, aggressive behavior, uh, fears and uh, anxieties. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, sexual relations problems and uh, personality development. And uh, what uh, specifically I want to talk about is that uh, when there are photos uh, that are used in advertisement that uh, are uh, manipulated, that are not in their original form, uh, what effect do they have on the psychological development of youth? Uh, this uh, issue has gone so much higher that uh, according to the uh, American Academy of Fac Facial uh, Plastic Surgery, they have uh, uh, named a new disease. Uh, it is called Snapchat dysphoria. Uh, according to them, uh, there has been 300% raise in plastic surgery of facial uh, uh, amendments uh, from uh, 2015 to 2019. People want, especially youth, want to do plastic surgeries of their face just to look like how they look like after applying 
filters of Snapchat or Instagram to their face. This is a real thing. It's uh, not my own thing. It's called Snapchat, uh, Snapchat dysphoria. And uh, there have been numerous cases. Uh, for example, this is a real ad uh, of uh, L'Oreal uh, where the picture of uh, Julia Roberts was highly uh, airbrushed and edited and the skin was looking like plastic. And uh, there was a case, uh, a lawsuit against uh, this uh, advertisement in uh, US where uh, the parents uh, of a 16-year-old girl uh, sued this uh, advertisement to, because their daughter was extremely unhappy with her own appearance. And uh, she started to have a real uh, problem in her career development and uh, uh, her personality development after this. And after that, uh, this advertisement was completely banned all over the world. Uh, and this advertisement is from L'Oreal. Uh, there are some uh, initiatives uh, taken by government officials all over the world. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, Scottish Senator uh, Joe Simpson uh, especially talked uh, about uh, this problem. And uh, she said that uh, we have to uh, make a law against photo editing uh, in advertisement. And uh, the same on the right hand side uh, is another uh, from South Australia. Uh, it's another government official uh, where she was talking about the same issue in uh, their assembly. Uh, these are a few examples of celebrities that uh, have uh, made a rule uh, that uh, if you want to use my picture, uh, there should be no editing done. Kate Winslet, Carl Van, Gal Gadget, uh, they're all over internet. If you see their pictures, it will be without any edits. So now that things get more interesting, these are five countries so far worldwide that have, a ma that have made a rule uh, against uh, uh, advertisement that whenever there is a picture in uh, advertisement, uh, a picture, if there is uh, editing done, then they have to uh, put a warning label on the advertisement that the picture is manipulated and is not in its original form. Uh, England, France, uh, Spain, Israel was the first one uh, to make this Photoshop rule. It's called uh, in 2013 and Italy. So far, we don't have such a uh, rule uh, in Ukraine. These are the examples. Uh, where you can see, uh, like for example, this Kelvin Klein uh, advertisement, it has been clearly mentioned, Photoshop Ritachi. And these are another examples uh, of advertisement in France. This is my own research on Ukrainian youth. Uh, there was a questionnaire uh, of 20 questions. And uh, from this uh, methodology, uh, I came to realize, I will just talk about the three questions because of the limited time. So one of the first question was that, uh, and uh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, this uh, uh, survey was uh, done uh, between 91 people, uh, aged between uh, 16 to 30. And uh, uh, it was anonymously done without any name, without any pictures, without any context. So to get the more uh, most of the realistic data, this research was done by me in Kiev. And the first most question was that, do you believe the pictures in advertisement are real or edited? And shockingly, 43% of people uh, believe that they are in original form, which is really high number. It's not a, a small number. Uh, then 11% of people uh, do not like themselves in mirror. This is uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, issue of uh, biggest symptom of uh, BDD, body dysphoria disorder. And uh, they don't, these people said that we don't like ourselves in mirror, but we like ourselves in pictures. This is a, a really uh, interesting uh, connection. 
And uh, when we asked about that, do you believe that this uh, rule in Ukraine should be applied uh, or not about uh, putting a warning label on advertisement, then 78% of people have voted that the warning label uh, is a good idea. So from all these analysis, um, I have uh, concluded that uh, these photo editing techniques create unrealistic beauty standard in youth and then uh, these uh, uh, this youth is suffering from uh, many uh, psychological psychological disorders and this youth is going to be our future uh, controllers of uh, the whole country rather the whole world and we should be um, i think we should uh, teach them about all these things uh, because internet and photo editing and advertisements, they are not going to go away. They are going to live with us forever now. So uh, to teach them about uh, these things are uh, since childhood, for example, uh, in school when a girl or a boy is 12, 13 years old, yeah, these uh, topics should be taught to them that what is real and what is fake and uh, or what uh, makes them actually beautiful. This uh, education so far, uh, educational uh, topics are not included, uh, which uh, affects people through the internet. And uh, I think uh, in future, maybe in Ukraine as well, the law of Photoshop can be adopted so people can uh, see uh, what is real and what is not. So that was the topic of my presentation today. If you have any questions, they are most welcome. Participant is uh, Tatiana Kovalkova and Tatiana Malkova. Um, burnout syndrome, uh, a study uh, among lectures, please. Good afternoon. I want to share our presentation. One second. So the title of our manuscript is Burnout Syndrome, a study among lecturers. And uh, my name is Tatiana Kovalkova. I am PhD in Pedagogical Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of Psychology, Kroc University. Here you can see my email. And the second author is Tatiana Malkova, Doctor in Psychology, Senior Researcher, Professor of the Department of Psychology, Kroc University. And also uh, on the slide is her email. So uh, we will talk at first about the urgency of uh, the study. Burnout is quite common in developed countries. Uh, it has been shown to associate uh, with physical illnesses or depressive disorders. And the urgency of the study of emotional burnout syndrome in psychology is conditioned by the report that psychological burnout recognized as a disease in Belgium. Burnout had a negative influence on motivation, productivity, and well-being of people. According to the reports of TV channel VRT and LSWAR, more than 10,000 people annually seek medical help because of fatigue at work. At the end of November 2016, Belgian Health Minister Maggie de Bloch promised that the authorities will soon recognize burnout as a disease. In 20 14, some employees of Belgium made a burnout at work in the list of insurance cases because of redundancy. People do not protest, although the load on the remaining staff increases. In fact, uh, they, uh, they are afraid of redundancy. So professional burnout has become rampant nowadays. Sorry. So we uh, will talk about the purpose of uh, our article. The aim uh, of this article uh, was to explore the presence of phases and symptoms of burnout syndrome among university lecturers. And burnout syndrome has been described as a lack of ability to cope with emotional stress at work and as a physical syndrome. We investigated whether the lecturers experience burnout. The relationship between gender and the syndrome of emotional burnout was also explored. So our survey included the following task. the tasks. The first task is to estimate the phases of burnout of lecturers. The second is to estimate the symptoms of burnout of lecturers. And the third, to explore the relationship between gender and the emotional burnout syndrome. 
Burnout uh, is quite common in developed countries and several symptoms of burnout were exploited by scientists. For example, investigators defined depression as a mental disorder that affected person with feeling tired and sleep disorder. Other scientists wrote about the back depression inventory that was designed to measure the severity of depression. Another symptom of burnout, which is anxiety, was determined as a feeling of fear and concern that uh, wasn't associated with the specific situation. Also, anxiety was investigated as a special test taking anxiety. Uh, nevertheless, burnout has most often been studied in caregiving professionals. Nowadays, teaching is one of the most stressful occupations. Uh, sources of stress and lack of job satisfaction include low salary and status of the profession, student misbehavior, relationships with leaders. Lecturers also have emotional interactions during their working day and have a great number of emotional demands compared to to their specialists. The stress and lack of job satisfaction can lead to emotional and physical exertion, negative behavior about teaching, reducing the feeling of one's own accomplishment. Teaching is an emotional profession. Nowadays, there is little research on the emotional aspects of teachers' life. To our knowledge, teachers who experience more positive emotions report greater job satisfaction and less burnout. Positive emotions help teachers to struggle with negative emotions and build good personal relationships with others. Teachers who report greater support from leaders also have greater job satisfaction and less burnout. So as teaching is quite a demanding activity, we can see that relatively little is known, however, about lecturers' burnout. And burnout syndrome had been described as a lack of ability to cope with emotional stress at work and as an extreme use of energy which leads to a feeling of exertion. So we can see that Chenis divided five clinical symptoms of burnout syndrome. They include the first one, th uh, physiological illnesses. The second is emotional symptoms. And then behavioral symptoms, intellectual displays and social symptoms. For example, uh, if uh, we will speak about social symptoms. They are low social activity, degrees of interest in leisure and hobbies, social contracts are limited, miserable relationships with colleagues at work and in family. So uh, about our methods, uh, participants and procedure. Uh, our observational study was uh, conducted with 22 lecturers at National Aviation University in Kyiv, Ukraine. Our sample consisted of 14 females and eight males. The age of the lecturers varied from young lecturers to retired lecturers, and the influence of working conditions on physical health, emotional well-being, and development of burnout syndrome was investigated. So um, we investigate burnout by measure of a Boyka questionnaire because uh, Boyka is one of the most prominent researchers of uh, burnout syndrome. And about our results, uh, the first figure shows the level of formation of burnout phases depending on the score obtained. So uh, the workload is always associated with burnout. The work of lecturers is physically demanding, allows limited rest, and is associated with sleep deprivation. The below results suggested that the second stage of burnout was significantly higher than uh, others. Consequently, participants had such stages of burnout, 29.85 uh, it is tension, 38.51% percent resistance and 31.51% uh, percent exertion. Thus, those who reported higher stages of burnout also reported the higher quantity of negative emotions connected with their jobs. So the next figure, figure two, uh, shows uh, the level of formation of burnout symptoms depending on the score obtained. So of the participants, 10.16% uh, experienced psychotraumatic events, 7.25% had dissatisfaction with themselves, 
4.53% had the feeling of being caged, 7.94% felt anxiety and depression, 8.59% experienced inadequate emotional response, 7.69% had emotional ethical disorientation, 12.73% experienced economy of emotions, 9.5% felt reduction of professional responsibilities, 5.19% had emotional deficit, 6.43% experienced emotional avoidance, 6.15% uh, felt depersonalization, and 13.74% had psychosomatic and psychovegative disorders. Although the relationship between gender and the syndrome of emotional burnout uh, was investigated, and uh, this relationship is not monosemantic, uh, it is notable that men burn more than women, others vice versa. Consequently, there is influence on gender on the phases of emotional burnout. Uh, we further decided to reveal uh, the interconnection of gender and stages of uh, burnout. And this interconnection uh, you can see on uh, figure three and figure four. The first uh, figure three, uh, it is level of formation of men burnout and figure four of women burnout. Uh, thus, uh, we can conclude that men are more likely to respond through the first phase of the emotional burnout syndrome uh, that is called tension, uh, while women are more likely to respond by the second stage of the syndrome that is called resistance. So our findings you can see uh, on my screen on the slide of presentation, the results suggested that the second stage of burnout resistance was significantly higher than others. Tension had 29.85% of the participants and exhaustion 31.51%. Uh, so nowadays burnout is a problem more common than generally believed. It had a great influence on both society and lecturers. Lecturers showed high burnout rates, especially older specialists. They had such symptoms of burnout, psychosomatic and psychovegative disorders, economy of emotions and experiencing psychotraumatic events. Although it is important to mark that the majority of lecturers are not stressed, overloaded or burned out. Uh, nevertheless, the great majority of lecturers are pleasured, wrapped, and find their work satisfying. However, the negative aspects of teaching have dominated. So lecturers need to regulate emotions that help them to be more effective in achieving academic goals, building high-grade relationship with leaders, and maintaining good discipline practices. So finally, lecturers should consistently manage their own emotional displays as well as they emotions of their students. And in conclusion, teaching is traditionally viewed as a profession with high requirements. The aim is to reduce stressors and uh, you can use individual strategies that have been considered to prevent burnout. They include relaxation, time management, training in interpersonal and social skills, team building and meditation. Although Today's lecturers have many different motives for working in the classroom. Teaching can be said to be the mission for many entering the profession. Thank you for your attention. I want to invite the uh, last uh, participant, participants. The <coughs> Irina Sinhaivska and Hanna uh, Hulko. Uh, the impact of a pandemic on the level of students' annexity. Uh, let me introduce our research uh, by me, Ganna Gurko, and uh, PhD in psychology, associate uh, professor, head of the Department of Psychology, Krok University, Irina Singaivska. Uh, so, uh, our study of the level of situational and personal anxiety of university students during online learning and the impact of the pandemic on the level of students' anxiety. Uh, the past 2020 was unusual for the world world and changed the lives of most people on the planet. Uh, health safety being everyone's basic needs uh, was at stake. 
uh, we began to worry about our health, it influenced on our psychological state, increased uncertainty, anxiety and disturbance. Uh, but prolonged anxiety leads to health uh, deterioration and causes a decrease in efficiency and effectiveness. And this study will find out how exactly the pandemic and its consequences, information, health state and stress, affect an individual's anxiety and its components, as well as what factors help you reduce anxiety. Uh, it is important to emphasize that in psychology there is anxiety as an emotional state, situational anxiety, and as a persistent trait. Uh, to study our level of anxiety of people and the factors that cause or influence it, we selected 200 respondents, full-time students aged uh, from 17 to 25, who have been studying in a distance online format during the last year, uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, in our research, uh, we used the questionnaire and the anxiety integrative test method by Bezu, Wasserman and Diwoble. Uh, which examines the level of manifestation of the main anxiety components like emotional discomfort, asthenic and phobic components, uh, respective anxious assessment and social protection, in which we added a third block, personal anxiety until March 2020, so until to the pandemic. Uh, and we have the main results of the study. Uh, the results of the study of worry and anxiety using the anxiety integrative test show that the overall level of anxiety of respondents was indeed significantly higher during 2020, during the pandemic, uh, than before the spread of the virus and during the survey in January 2021. Now, uh, among the components Next, among the components of anxiety, its level was most influenced by the asthenic component and the anxious perspective assessment. Uh, how can you see on the figure? Uh, next, uh, anxiety related to a disease has some peculiarities. Thus, the greatest anxiety was felt by those who suffered from somatic and chronic diseases the least those who were not sick at all. Interestingly, uh, people with various types of SARS felt more anxious than those with COVID-19. Uh, respondents also note uh, that they experienced increased anxiety while watching the news, uh, 37%, being on public transport, 17.8%, uh, being in rooms with a large number of people. 17.3% and other. Uh, among the ways uh, to overcome anxiety used by respondents, according to them, uh, watching movies or listening to music, work, study, sport, household chores, communication with relatives and meditation were the most helpful for them. Uh, therefore, we can conclude the following. The pandemic situation has really had a significant impact on the life of the average Ukrainian student. They have an increased level of anxiety. Uh, such factors as watching news, being in public places with a large number of people or in public transport mostly lead to the anxiety. Homework, immersion in work or study, sports and communication help to fight anxiety. Uh, thank you for your attention. In the end uh, of the work of our section, economics, I want to uh, tell uh, thank you for all participants of our conference. And I want to um, wish you uh, all the best and uh, good health and good mood and um, <clears throat> a new uh, interest in uh, scientific research in uh, uh, your future work and uh, I want to uh, uh, see you all uh, on the next uh, um, conference too. Thank you very much and uh, um, see you later.